Hey, what's going on everybody? Mala here and uh, wait a second. Today we're going to be taking a look at our first gaming headset. And also it's our first wireless headset as well. So two birds with one stone. Say hello to the Razer Thresher. All these things may be a pair of gaming headsets, but I'm one for certain traditions. So let's go through those five main points as usual, shall we? First, price, because budget. Well, these things can cost you a pretty penny. If you get the normal ones, which are which are these, it's just Razer Thrasher 7.1, you're gonna be paying 150 bucks. But if you want to go a little bit fancier and get the Thresher Ultimate, these ones, you're gonna be paying 250 bucks. And what are those 100 bucks extra gonna get you? A headphone stand, a hub that connects to your PS4 or Xbox One and your PC, and that hub actually has something that's uh, a Adobe surround sound enhancer feature. So yeah, you're paying 100 bucks extra for those three things. Now, secondly, if you guys are not familiar with how Razer actually designed their headphones, these grates right here on the ear cups, they are not there because these are an open pair of headphones. These are actually closed. The grate, I guess, just looks nice and Razer has been designing their headphones like this since since the beginning, for as far as I can remember. But one interesting thing about the Thresher is that even though it is a closed headset, the soundstage on this thing is a bit better than I expected. It's not that it's super wide, but I don't know, it, it feels like it's, you know how how wide the soundstage is, you can feel, you can feel the width of the space around you. But the imaging and the separation between every instrumentation along those lines, within that width, within that soundstage, is really good. So it doesn't feel like everything is on top of each other as much. And that's something that I found really interesting. Third, I'm not even gonna go through because, it, I'm, I mean, easy to drive the wireless. You just connect a dongle to your PC or PS4 and you're done. They have a battery inside with enough juice to drive them for around 16 hours. And these things do get quite loud, actually. Fourth, let's talk a bit about the build, shall we? When you grab them in your hands, you can feel that they have some weight to them. They're not super light, they're not super heavy. They have some weight to them. They're built really nicely, there's a bunch of plastic, there's also metal, there's this little mesh underneath the headband, which is a self-adjustable one, so you don't need to fiddle with, you know, adjusting your headset, you just put it on your head and you're done. The metal railings on top of the headband, they don't actually transmit that much interference to the ear cups if you end up brushing against them while you're listening to something, so that's a bonus. They swivel around like 90 degrees so that you can put them on your shoulders like this, but they don't get flat enough for you to lay them flat on a table, so that's just not, it's just not its thing. It's made for you to, you know, sit them on your shoulders, not on the table. And one really special characteristic of this build for me is the ear cups, because these things are both big and super plush. They're so comfortable. I'm not sure if this is memory foam or not, This, but this leatherette is sitting on some super thick, juicy foam that just sits well in your ears. It, it feels like a donut, you know, fluffy on the side of your head. And that's important because it doesn't have the tightest clamp ever, but it does rely a little bit on the clamp on your ears to sit on your head, you know, perfectly. It doesn't rely on distributing all the weight on the headband themselves. And finally, last but not least, we have two things on number five, because we usually talk about how do they sound. So let's talk about the microphone a little bit. It's retractable so that you can hide them if you want when you're not using them. It has a ring of light right at the tip that turns red if you press the button that controls the volume underneath the ear cup so that you know that it's muted. And on the same ear cup you actually have the power button and the pairing button and a micro USB so that you can charge them. And this is how they sound. Okay, so this is how the Thresher actually sounds like. You guys can make a comparison with the microphone that I was using before, which is the one that comes with my Scarlett 2x2, and you can see there, there's a difference, right? It's not as clear, it picks up a lot more noise from the environment, and actually it's not about noise from the environment, it's a little, uh, 
it's kind of a little noisy itself. It's probably because of the processing that goes on between this thing and being wireless and transmitting it to my PC where I'm actually recording everything. But it's not ex it's not as clear as I would like it to be, as I would expect it to be. It's a little bit boomy, it's not nasally, but it's actually not a bad microphone. If you want to use this to game with your friends, either on PS4, because this is the PS4 version, or on Xbox, there's a green one for Xbox, or on your PC, and both the Xbox and the PS4 versions work with your PC, just in case you guys didn't know, this is going to get the job done. People are going to listen to you just fine. You're not going to sound like you're using professional equipment to record your audio, but it's not going to be bad either. Oh, and on the subject of noise from the environment, there are windows open right beside me and this is on purpose so that you guys can compare it to the next thing I'm going to show you in just a couple of seconds. Okay, so this is how a Vimoda Boom Pro sounds like in comparison to the Thresher and I guess also to my Scarlett 2i2 microphone. And you guys can hear even more of a difference right now, right? It's in between what the Thresher sounds like and what you were listening to before. It does pick up a little bit of noise from the environment just like the Thresher but it doesn't have that much of a noise in the processing of the sound itself. But it's way clearer, it's cleaner, it sounds a little bit better. But do bear in mind that the Thresher is all-in-one, a headset with a microphone attached that's completely wireless. And this thing needs to be attached to a headphone that you already have, plus you need headphones that have detachable cables so that you can swap one for the other. Well, they're not the best microphones around, but I guess the one thing that kind of bugs me a little bit about the quality of the microphone on the Thresher is that other headsets from Razer have better microphones. I didn't really expect these ones to sound like this. They're not absolute trash, but they could be way better. Now, I'm not the one that's going to be looking around for the best possible microphone on a headset. I end up using the actual microphone I'm recording this with my setup to game and stuff. But because of that, you guys kind of got me sold when I listened to the Thresher. Because this thing actually sounds really good. You know that soundstage that I talked to you guys about and the ability of this thing to actually separate everything with a really good imaging within that? Well, that's part of what makes these some of the best headsets I've ever heard. They are not extremely heavy on the bass, which for me is a plus. I didn't expect this sound signature for a gaming headset at all. And I've listened to music, played a bunch of games, saw a couple of movies, and they just performed admirably. There's the caveat that you're paying 150 bucks for something that sounds amazing and is wireless, but that, well, everything else is, you know, one in the mill. But yeah, I do think they sound really good. Okay, so let's close it up. If you're looking for the best possible microphone on a headset that's wireless, these are not it. But it's also not bad. It's good enough for you to game with your friends and everybody's gonna be able to understand what you're saying, no problem. On top of that, the build quality and the comfort level are really good and it really does sound much better than I anticipated. Overall, the 150 bucks are on the expensive side of things when it comes to a wireless gaming headset. But Razer, I do expect better from you guys. So grab a couple of people from the teams that made the other headsets, which have better microphones, and get them to work on this thing. Because when they do, best recommendation for wireless gaming headset ever. They really do sound that good. Well, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you did. Leave any comments or suggestions down below if you feel like it, as usual. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. You're gonna be paying extra, basically for the hub, which will get you the Dolby surround sound extra experience. No, just, just don't, D don't, don't.